very good friend of our father in the Lord. And he's an apostle. Hallelujah. All the way from the city of Lagos. Join me to welcome Apostle Victor James. If you are clapping, clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody, let's give him thanks. Let's give him thanks in Jesus' name. Praise God. Father, we give you thanks. Thank you for your name. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you. We are grateful. Even as we are set uh, for the word this morning, receive all the glory, Abba Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. All right. Um, last night, um, as we get into this morning's session, let me just briefly take you through last night for those of you that were not here or even if you were here for you to catch up um, this series on being filled with the spirit you know is, is like I said last night we're doing a build up gradually to it so we need to see what, what we're, the Lord is showing us first of all is for us to be able to see how to maintain to stay filled with the spirit when I mean filled, the word filled here is not that you are just going to be filled. It means that you are filled, but to stay in full, to stay full filled. That means you are full of the spirit. Amen. So most time, what we learn is that we need to be filled with the spirit. You know, always, which is okay, which is good. It's scriptural. It's godly. You see, but most importantly, we need to learn how to stay filled. Filled, to stay filled with the Spirit. And it's because people are not thought, taught how to stay filled with the Spirit. That's why believers run into challenges most of the time that they now think or feel not filled with the Spirit. Or not full of the spirit. Amen. So we, we have to balance that. We have to understand. Thank you Lord Jesus. Very important that we understand that. You see. Once you become born again. Once you become born again. What does it mean to be born again? I think that's the first question I should, I should answer. As we go into this morning session. Of this second teaching. In the part two of this. Thing. What, what does it mean to be born again? You see, to be born again does not mean that you are in church. To be born again does not mean that you are a pastor. Or a deacon or a deaconess. That's not what it means to be born again. You are not born again because you are cleaning church toilet, which is good. That's not what it means to be born again. To be born again, <clears throat> according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Glory be to God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Watch this. Why am I sounding like this? Please reduce that. First John chapter 5, verse 1. He said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. Anybody who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That's the one that is born again. Am I making sense? You are not born again because they gave an altar call. That's not why you are born again. You can come out for altar call and go back. You just say what the pastor wants you to say. And you go back, you're not born again. You're still not born again. That's why a lot of people are in church. They have not experienced Jesus yet. That's the challenge. So we're asking people to be filled with the spirit. When they themselves have not experienced Jesus yet. So what does it mean to be born again? Very simple. Put it up again. Look at this. It's, this is it. This is what it means to be born again. The Bible said... First, first John chapter 5 verse 1 Put it up again please He said whosoever believeth That Jesus is the Christ Is born again Or born of God Anybody who believes That Jesus is the Christ Do you know what Why is it that God tied being born again To just believing You don't have to do anything To be a child of God You don't have to cry to be born again you don't have to do fasting to be born again. You don't have to do 21 days prayer to be born again. 
As a matter of fact, you don't have to give money to church to be born again. Just believe. But look at what he says. He says you must believe that Jesus, Amananda, they are. Jesus. You see, there are so many Jesuses. How many of you have heard of the Jesus that plays football in Brazil? There's somebody called Jesus in Brazil. Now, in the time of Israel, God knew himself that there were so many people called Jesus in the Bible. How many of you know that? So there was not only one Jesus. There are so many people called Jesus, right? So among all those people called Jesus, God said, only one is the Christ. Only one is the Messiah. Only one is the Savior. So which one among them? Which one? The one among them that is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior that you must believe in is the one that died and rose from the dead. That God raised from the dead. Am I making sense? Talk to me now. Am I making sense? That is the one you should believe. Anyone that believes in that one, that that Jesus, the Christ in Jerusalem, that one that died and resurrected, anyone that believes in that one, that person will be saved, will be born again. That is what it means to be born again. Of all Jesus, the different Jesus all over the world. Let me show you one more before I run along. In Romans chapter 10, the Bible said from verse number 8 of Romans 10. Please show it up. I mean, put it up, please. In Romans 10 from verse 8. Watch this. Romans 10 verse 8. He said, for what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. Watch. Everybody, please. Keep watching. I mean, keep reading. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, what? The Lord, the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. What will happen to you? You will be saved. That is when you will be saved. There are so many Jesus. Ah, this God there. Eh? So that nobody will have right to boast before God. Nobody can say, I did this. I said that. I moved like this. That's why I'm a child of God. That's why I'm born again. That's why I'm filled with the whole of God. No, no, no. no. God said, no, no, no. There are two conditions to be a child of God, to be born again. You must confess that Jesus is Lord. The, put, put it, put it, put it, put verse 9. Everybody look at verse 9. You must confess that Jesus that with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, you must confess it, say it with your mouth, that that Jesus in Nazareth, that walked the street of Jerusalem, that one is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, Lord Jesus. The word Lord there means Elohim. Elohim. Jehovah, the almighty God. You see, the Jews, Israelites, will never call anybody Elohim. Because Moses had told them in Exodus, you must not have another God beside me. That's what God said. Am I making sense? So God now packaged himself in human body and descended into the world of man. So God said, I showed up as a man. Anybody that agrees that that same God that spoke to Moses on the mountain, I am the one that it is, it is this Jesus. You see, that to you and I, it is very easy. But to the Jews, Israelites, it is very difficult for them to say with their mouth that a man is Lord, is Elohim, is Jehovah. They can't believe it. That's why in Jerusalem, I mean, not Jerusalem, in Israel right now, they hate Jesus. They don't like, they don't like Jesus. The Jews, they hate him with bitterness. How can that small boy the son of a carpenter, be Lord. You know, I, have, I don't understand when a Nigerian or an African travel to Israel, come back, he will now add JP to his name, junior prisoner. I am sorry. You know. <laughs> when the Jews themselves 
do not believe that Jesus is Lord. You will travel to an ordinary land, you come back, you ask JP to your name. What is going on? People are just religious. Even the Jews, till today. Do you know the Jews, according, I was listening to the news. They are about to pass a law. One man moved a motion in their parliament. One of their lawmakers moved a motion that they should ban anybody from saying that Jesus is Lord in Israel. And you, you are still carrying the God of Israel in your head. I don't understand what is wrong with us. Israel, they hate Jesus with passion. They don't want, if you talk about, if you talk about Jesus in Israel as Lord, they will carry stone and stone you to death. So God said, I will tie salvation as a free gift to one condition. Admit, I am the one that came in the flesh. Remember, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In verse 14, he said, and the word became flesh. So God Almighty took on human body. So God said, just agree that I am Lord. That that Jesus Christ is the same Almighty God. He said, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Now, two things happen to you once you become saved. Once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Two vital things happen to you as a born again Christian. As a child of God. The moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Two vital things happen to you. As a matter of fact, I like to put it like this. Two unconditional things that cannot be taken away from you happen to you. The moment you agree in your heart to believe that that Jesus in Israel that was born in Bethlehem is actually the Lord, Jehovah. And then God raised him from the dead. You believe it. Two things happen to you. Thank you, precious father. I'm an Agada. See Bible. Are you understanding this thing now? This is how to stay filled. We're not looking for getting filled again. Thank you, precious father. Watch this. Two things I say happen to you. So let's go through those two things. Number one. As soon as you agree. By agreeing, you now believe in Jesus. That this one is, he is the Lord. He is Jehovah. The God of the Israelites. He is. He is the one. He is Jehovah. He is that God. And that truly, God raised him from the dead. Once you believe that, the first thing that happens to you is that God takes you as a person and presents you to himself. You didn't hear me. What, what does God do? He takes you and brings you to himself. Am I making sense? Someone say, the day I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, God immediately took me and presented me to himself. You see, you didn't present yourself to God. He presented you to himself. Am I making sense? In the Old Testament, someone say Old Testament. God does not present anybody to himself. You have to bring yourself. Now you are going come. In the Old Testament, God does not present anybody to himself. You have to bring yourself. And do you know, you can't find God. So how do you present yourself to God? It's a spirit. How many of you have seen God before? Okay, how many of you have seen a photograph of God before? It does not exist because God is a spirit. That's what Jesus said in John 4. He said God is a spirit. So God cannot be seen. So how do they present themselves to God? So David said, I will come into your presence. Is it that David is lying? Or there is something David is saying that we need to understand. Am I making sense? That's why that song. Woo, glory be to God. Somebody's about to be shocked. That song. There is something that makes me come into your presence. That song should not be sung by you. That song is ungodly. 
It's, it's, it's wrong. There is something that makes me come. You are coming to where? Nobody is qualified to merit coming to God. You can't. You see, in the Old Testament, when they say, I'm coming to God, or I'm going to present myself to God, they were referring to the tabernacle of Moses. Look at the way people are looking at me. R-O-C-C-G. Are you people hearing truth? There was a tabernacle in Israel. That time, built by Moses. That tabernacle has an outer court, holy place, and the holy of holies. Am I making sense? Now, every time they say they are going to present themselves to God, that means they are going to that tabernacle. Because in the holy of holies of that tabernacle, that is where the ark of God's presence was. The ark that represented God's presence. That is where the ark was. Abalandete. Are you hearing truth here? You know, people don't like to hear truth. A lot of people don't like truth. But they are in the church, but they hate the truth. You know why? The truth of the gospel of Christ takes the focus off you. It removes your confidence from you and puts your confidence in Jesus. And people don't like that. They don't want the truth. But the truth is still the truth. So when David said, I will come into your presence, what was David referring to? I will come to that tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant was. Come on now. Is somebody understanding it now? All right. See, see, see truth. Hey, see Bible to your law. Now, God decided I don't want anybody to go before that tabernacle anymore. God counseled it. This evening, I'm going to show you how God counseled it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But because of time, so let me just run through this thing. Hey, I'm telling you, by the time we finish this thing, we will be walking in the air. We will live, we will walk filled. Not trying to be filled. Filled. 24 hours. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, God counseled that tabernacle. He cancelled that tabernacle. That holy place. I mean, outer court, holy place, and holy of holies. God cancelled it. It's no more in existence. The tabernacle in Jerusalem is no more in existence. Somebody say it's no more in existence. Say God does not live inside there again. No, talk to me. Say God does not live there again. All right. So, when, how do we then, as believers, come before the presence of God? How do I come before the presence of God? Now that I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. How? How do I do it? See Bible. <laughs> this thing they work out for my body. In Colossians chapter 1. Verse 22. Please put Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. NLT translation. Of Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. Thank you Lord Jesus. Watch this. Uh, no, uh, yeah Look at it, everybody Let's read it together, watch, watch Everybody please, I beg you, look at it Yet now God has done what to us He reconciled you Talk to me now God reconciled you to who? Himself, Himself. Do you know that we didn't reconcile ourselves to God? Oh you, you people talk to me now. Did we reconcile ourselves to God? No, he is the one who reconciled himself to us. Look, even while we were unbelievers, we were telling God, you're a stupid man, I don't like God. God does not exist. Get out of here. We can't God. I don't need him. God said, look, the quarrel between me and you is over. I'm not going to fight you again. Even if you are fighting me, I do not recognize your fight. I reconcile you to myself. Hallelujah. Oh, the greatest love. See, the love of God. He chose to reconcile himself, to reconcile me to himself. So that even in my stupidity, he's protecting me. Abarandetes. Do you know, before you got born again, you should have died. But because he reconciled you ahead of time, your mistake could not kill you before you got saved. Somebody say, thank you, Father. All right, watch you. Put the scripture back on. Hey. See, 
put NLT now, my dear. Put, just stay with me. He said, yet now God has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. Watch this. As a result, as a result of what? The death of Christ. Are you seeing this thing in the Bible? Is it, is it showing here? <laughs> as a result of the death of Christ. Watch. As a result of the death of Christ, he has brought you where? No, where, where did God bring you? He brought you into his presence. Hey How did God bring you into his presence? Because Jesus has already died and you believe in Jesus. So by believing in him, God took you and brought you into his presence. Hallelujah! 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 So where are you now? Where are you now? In the presence of God. So are you supposed to sing, there is something that makes me come into your presence? You are not supposed to sing it because that's where you are already. Adabatagazataya. Somebody shout hallelujah. You didn't come to his presence. He brought you there. If he brought you, you can't remove yourself. Because you can't find how you got there. Do you know how you got there? Jesus died. And that is death made the way for him to bring you in. So for you to go out, Jesus has to undie. He has to cancel his death. But the Bible said in that he died. He died no more. For death has no power over him. You have come. You have come. Let me congratulate you. Welcome into the presence of God. I say welcome into the presence of God. Welcome into the presence. Look at me. The presence of God is not inside this building. Aha, some people are angry now. About Andetes. They say, let's go into the presence of God. Say, so, where, where is the presence of God? In our church. Arusis is it? Dominion, um, Dominion Tower. That's where the presence of God is. Get out of town. Do you know, once we close service now and we move out of this building, if there is no security man watching this building, thieves will come and steal this television and this camera. And God will be watching them. You know why? God does not live inside here. <laughs> ah, so roboto. The first thing God does, as soon as you got born again, He brought you into His presence. And look at what He says. Put put that scripture again. In, he said, he say, he say, Yet now He has reconciled you to Himself through the death of Christ in His physical body. As a result of that death, not because of whatever you did, as a result of the death of Jesus Christ, God has brought you into His own presence. And you are holy, blameless, as you stand before him without a single fault. No, I can spend a week on that one. <laughs> but let us leave that for now. <laughs> hey! After he brought you to himself, because you are now born again. Look at me. Number two. God now filled you with himself. You didn't hear what I said. What did God do? He filled you with himself. Somebody say I'm filled with God. No, no, say it like me. Say I'm filled with God. Say it one more time. Say I'm filled with God. Look, let me tell you. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, it doesn't change anything. You are a carrier of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, look at what he said. Thank you, Jesus. Put it up. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Is this 3, 16 or 6, 16? Whichever one. No, no, put, put, put King James because it, it helps to. I will come back to this NLT. He said, know you not that you are what now? The temple of God. You are the temple. You are elegate. He moved into you. So anywhere you are going, who is going there? God. <laughs> anywhere you sit, who is sitting down there? God. You know, there's one of my son. Every time I see him, I say, I've not seen you since. Where are you coming from? He says, sir, I'm coming from the mountain. 
Anytime I see him again, why am I saying, what happened? How are you? So I was like, he said, I've been on the mountain since. I said, what is happening on this mountain? He said, he went there to meet God. I said, you are living in the realm of Moses. You are not living in the realm of Christ. God does not stay on any mountain anymore. He doesn't live on any mountain. You can't find him on any mountain. Someone said, that land at the so-so -so place is a holy ground. That's where God is. That's a lie of the devil. God is not on any ground. Now you people don't like me again. Because I'm teaching you the truth. You see, the mountain you are going, the holy ground you are going, you are the one that is carrying God there. You are the one that took God there. Once you leave the place, God has left the place. You are filled with God. I said you are filled with God. You are a God carrier. Abaya. You are a God carrier. Tell yourself, I carry God. Anywhere I get to, that is where God is. You see, Jesus, one time, Jesus went to the well to fetch water. And then a Samaritan woman came to meet Jesus. He said, you did you. You are coming to fetch water from us. When you know that it's competition between you, our people and your people. Jesus, what is the competition? He said, you people say, God is on your own mountain, on your own side of Jerusalem. He said, but we, we said, God is on our own mountain. Jesus said, a time is coming. Whether this mountain or that mountain, you can't find God there anymore. Because God is about to change his address. He changed his address. Now, he said, don't you know? Put NLT of that first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Put NLT. Put NLT translation. Oh, hallelujah. This thing is doing me as if I smoke something. He said, don't you realize? Somebody say, I realize it now. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of who now? Of God. And that the spirit of God, where does it live? Inside of you. Somebody say, I have, I have the Holy Ghost. I have the life of God. You see, let me say this to you quickly for the benefit of those who are not even here but watching. You see, the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, that's not his name. His name is not Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We are the ones that call him like that to identify him and separate him from evil spirit. This is like saying Holy God because they are evil gods. Holy Savior. Because they are evil saviors. You see, so that's why he is called Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. That's not his name. <laughs> it's just a way of identifying him. That this spirit is from Almighty God. It's a genuine spirit. You see, eh, his true name or description is the presence of God. The Holy Spirit, his name is the presence of God. How many of you know that, if, especially if you are married, or your father, your mother, your husband, your wife, your friend, close friend, you know, if the person is not around, you'll be missing the person's presence. Once you go out, you come back into the room, you, you can feel that something is not there. Uh, you see, that presence of your husband, presence of your wife, presence of your friend, that you, you are missing. God, his own, is a person. Yeah. Redeem, no, hear me on. No, hear me on. Holy Ghost, help them to hear me on. God's presence is a person. Did you get what I said? <laughs> you see, my own presence is a sense. You sense it. Do you know what I mean by sense? That's why I said if your husband is not around, you enter into the bedroom. You know, or a woman or a man that the spouse died, the husband died, or the woman, the wife, the husband. That's why I said that they have to pack out of that house. Because you can always feel the presence of the husband. You see, it's a sense. But God's presence is not a sense. It's a person. It's a person. It's a being. It looks exactly like Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? He has hands, he has legs. He has eyes. He can talk. As a matter of fact, he's the power of God. He's everything God. That's why the Bible said, watch this. The Bible said in 1 John, 
in first john please listen to me because some people i don't know why people go to some people go to church they just blow them breeze <laughs> especially when truth is coming but if i'm preaching about your enemy now all your enemies are pursuing to this place they will die in seven days he was like, hey, man. you know they die because if they truly die the pastor should not remember and say the same thing on wednesday again can't you ask questions you go to church sunday morning all your enemies you will not see them again amen on wednesday again all your enemies you will not see them again amen on sunday again all your enemies you will not see them again amen can't you say, sir daddy do they do they keep resurrecting is it that when we finish church they die and then after church as i get to they wake up again that means the enemy has resurrection power it's because god does not answer such prayers but when you know the truth he said the truth you know will make way for you we we free you i'm not talking here you will just know that you know that you know that you are you not Adasa. oh jesus have mercy on my soul are you hearing this <laughs> Hey! <laughs> the spirit of God is the person who is the presence of God that's why once the spirit of God shows up you will feel God's presence they say oh God is in this place no no the person that showed up is his presence that's who we call the spirit of God his actual name is the whole of God. That's his name. The whole of God. The whole of God. That's why God is sitting down on the throne and he's inside you. He's inside me. And he's talking to somebody right now somewhere giving them prophecy. Yet, it's the same God. Don't you get it? The Holy Spirit is the one that is doing it simultaneously. So, you know what happens? Jesus, have mercy on me. See, Bible. This is raw. What are you talking about? This is not a religious activity. This is raw truth. Okay. <laughs> Everywhere Jesus went, the Bible said he did good. You know why? He said, for God was with him. Who was with him? Talk to me now. Who was with him? Now, how are we sure that God was with Jesus? In Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Don't answer off head. You must answer for the scriptures. <laughs> because if you answer off head, you answer religiously. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Guess what he anointed him with? The Holy Spirit. So God did not anoint Jesus with olive oil. He anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. You didn't hear what I said. And as soon as Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, he went. He went about doing good. For God was with him. So which God was with him? The Holy Ghost. The presence of God is what makes God available to you. I mean the Holy Spirit is what makes God's presence available to you. So 1 John now says. See Bible. 1 John says. He said our fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. No say like me. Say fellowship. Say like me. Say fellowship. fellowship. Our fellowship is with the Father. And with the Son. Somebody is missing. Okay, let me show you that scripture. Well, lie, by the time we finish, we'll be walking in the air. God punish the devil. All this satanic harassment will stop. In 1 John chapter 1, from verse 5. See verse 5? Put it, let's see. Everybody see Bible. No, no, put King James now. Or you should look for it for me. Is that a fel Whether it's verse 3, I can't remember which I, I actually... Verse 3, Abby. Put verse 3. First John chapter 1, verse 3. He said, That which we have seen and heard, declared we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. Watch you. He said, And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Our fellowship, the word fellowship means intermingling, koinonium, an infusion. That's the meaning of fellowship. You know when husband and wife meet? You know what I mean by meet, now? Husband and wife, man and woman meet. You know, and they do what husband and wife does or do. I'm not feeling what I'm saying. <laughs> the man gets up. 
that man has had fellowship intermingling a part of him and the woman has mixed you can't differentiate that part of them that has met that has met are you seeing him the bible said our fellowship our mixing our union infusion is with the father and the son jesus christ my question is where is the holy spirit does that mean we don't have fellowship with the holy spirit he's the one that makes the union possible <laughs> he's the one that makes the union real he's the one that makes god real to you he is the presence of god he is everything god anything anything god can do is who the holy ghost is i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here without the holy ghost god is powerless You see, eh? Lord forgive me, I just want to say this to encourage your people. Without the Holy Ghost, you can beat God very well. You beat him, slap him, deal with him. <laughs> he is the power of God. The presence, everything God is. Everything God is, that is the Holy Spirit. Are you understanding it? And God put everything he is inside you. Everything God is, is where? No, no, talk to me now. It's where now? It's inside you. You are not so... Everybody, look up to heaven and say, oh God. Look, everyone, look up to heaven and say, oh God. You see? Oh, 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 oh. And you are looking. And you too, you are looking. What are you looking? With all this teaching, I've been teaching this. Which heaven? Where, where is God? He said, God is up here. <laughs> Do you know, even looking at the globe, you can't look like this and say, this is heaven. The map, now the globe, the globe, the earth. You can't stay in one place. As, some of us are like this. We are walking like this. But it's gravity that is not allowing us to fall. So whichever part of the earth you are, and you look up, and you say you are looking up, you are not looking at which side you are look, you have, your head is facing. So God does not live by looking up anymore. Everything he is, is in you. So Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 now says, see Bible. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Put it in King James. Look at what he now says. Before I show you NIV. He said, and you, yeah, and you someone say and me now help me point to somebody he says including you point to somebody and you no point tell somebody and you no point to another person you and you he said you are complete in him oh party shake it now i rest my case there is nothing missing about you there is nothing about god that you should look for you are complete. All right, let's say we don't understand English too much. We can't read Colossians chapter 2, verse 10 in King James. Everybody look at NIV translation. Put an NIV. Everybody look at this. And in Christ. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in Christ. No, help me read it now. Don't get angry with scripture. I'm, I, have I told you anything out of my head? Everything I've said, I've showed you from the pages of the scripture. And in Christ, what happened? You have been brought to what? Fullness. Somebody say, I'm filled. Say, I'm complete. No, say, it, say I'm filled. Say, I'm complete. You see, whatever God will do for you, he will do it from inside you. You don't need to look for a man of God. You see, some men of God now won't like me. Again. Say, oh... This man is spoiling, is spoiling things for us. I'm not spoiling anything, but I'm just teaching the people the truth. <laughs> you have been brought to fullness. You are full. 
everything God is in you. Ah, Holy Spirit, grant understanding in the name of Jesus. Everything God is in you. Some of say it's in me. Ramanagata ya grete angrotos as abadaya. Ezubre de agangroto bose. E di abada. I know that there are people who have thought that you need to be filled with the spirit, which is true. And then as you go, you, you need to be filled again and again with the spirit. Especially when they read the book of Ephesians. You see, Paul was not saying that when he said that you should be filled with the spirit and not with excess wine. You know, so what they think is that it's like the way you drink, you know, alcohol. For you to be actually filled with the alcohol, you take one glass, you take second glass, you take third glass, you say, ah, this man is filled with alcohol. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. So, do you know, do you understand what I'm saying? And that's how some Christians think, some Christians think that the filling of the Holy Spirit is to us. You know, like some, a man goes to beer parlor, they give you one glass of beer, he takes one, he's still normal talking, takes another one, takes another one, I remember many years ago, in 1970-something. I can't remember where I went. I've never taken beer in my life. Alcohol. As a non-believer, I don't know where we went. So everyone was drinking. So my friends, I said, what is it? You said, you know, I better take, okay. I said, no, I don't. He said, okay, take one glass. Then at least take one glass, just one glass. So they now put beer. He said, one glass for me. Me that my brain has never experienced alcohol before. So I now took it. Go, 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 go. Just one glass. Of Suddenly, I felt that the earth was moving. And my friends were shifting right and left. So I now told them, I said, why are you people shifting up and down? They said, we didn't shift. We're not shifting anything. I said, no, no, don't move. Go like this now. Come move back again. I said, people stop moving. I don't like it. They thought I was joking. I began to urinate on them. When I finished the urinating, they now took me home. The next day in the morning, I woke up. I said, come. And I called one of them to come to my house. I said, you know, yesterday I had a dream. I said, in the dream, you were moving like this, like this. And now you urinated a lot of you. You know what he told me? He said, you're a stupid man. Something you did physically. I said, eh? I thought it was in the dream. You see, I was filled with the alcohol. Are you seeing it? So, when the Bible said in Ephesians, be not filled with wine, wherein it is excess. He said, but be filled with the spirit. He's not saying you take one glass of spirit, you take another glass of Holy Spirit, you take another glass of Holy Spirit, then you'll be filled with the spirit. No, no, that's not what he's saying. You see, the more of the knowledge of what Jesus has done for us that you have and you are walking in, it is the level of the fullness of the Holy Ghost that you will walk in. Abba Father. You see, when they told Jesus, that Lazarus was dead. Eh? Wherever Jesus was, he didn't start doing fasting and prayer because of Lazarus. Four days later, they came to tell Jesus. He's been dead four days ago. Jesus now told the disciples, they said our brother is sick. Let's go and wake him up. Eh? The disciples are wondering, ah, for where? Anyway, to cut the long story short, they don't reach, they are at Lazarus' house. If it's you and I, say the truth before God. What do you think we will start doing first of all? Huh? No, talk to me now. Somebody say something. What, what, what do you think we will start doing first of all? When we get, when we get to Lazarus' their house? You will talk loud. I'm not hearing you now. We start crying. Okay. Apart from crying, what else do we do then? Eh? 
You will talk. Whether you are right or wrong, don't be afraid. Be part of it. He said what? Without praying in tongues. All right. Do you know actually what we start doing is that we want to raise Lazarus from the dead. We will now get a singer, a choir singer, lead us in worship or lead us in praise. This is the day, another day. Holy Ghost must answer me. We don't fight Holy Ghost. Holy God, no way to Holy Ghost do us. And when we are singing, it is with vigor and with strength. This is the day. And not that day. Holy Ghost, if you don't answer me, you're in trouble. Holy Ghost must answer me. You see, while we're singing this song, Lazarus will keep dying more and more. So by the time we finish singing, he would have been dead for five days. You see, but Jesus went there with the knowledge that the Father had filled him with everything that he needed to be filled with. When he got there, he said, oh, roll the stone. Roll the stone away. The Bible said the people that were crying for the parent, for the family, started mocking Jesus. You don't know. The man has been dead for days. Jesus said, I don't care how many days he's been dead. He called him Lazarus. Come forth. The Bible said, God who said, let there be light. He has shown the same light in our hearts. The same light. The same God that said, let there be Light, he said, He has shown the same light in our heart so that we having the same spirit of faith. That means we shouldn't do praise and worship like God. He didn't do praise and worship when he was going to say, Let there be light. He just looked and saw darkness. He said, Let there be light. There was no praise and worship, yet light answered. Why is it difficult for you to agree? You are filled with the whole of God. Don't walk by your feelings, don't think that you are lesser. Am I making sense? Don't think that something is wrong with you. The ayata of Satan. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God says, I should tell you. You see, his presence that he, God has brought you into and his presence that he has filled you with, God will never take the two of them from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, David said, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Because the Holy Spirit does not live inside them. It comes on them. So he was begging that the Holy Spirit on him should not be taken. But for you and I, the Holy Spirit does not live on us alone. He lives where? Inside us. And it is permanent. Someone say permanent. No, say like we say, it is permanent. So whether you feel the Holy Spirit or not, the Holy Ghost is inside you. And someone say, that worship song, they have not, that's why you see that when some people come to church, they are waiting for their own personal worship song that they like. If choir or the person is leading praise and worship has not sang that song, they don't feel God's presence. Ah, that, that sister is not as anointed as sister, sister Joy. Because she's not in the spirit. She should have known that my spirit was waiting for that particular song. You see, that one is confused. So that kind of a person will be living a life of, I am not filled with the spirit. But that's a lie. You are filled. You have come to fullness. Whether you hear the right song or not, the song is not what brought the Holy Spirit into you. And the song is not what brought you into the presence of the Father. Am I making sense here? And that song, whether it is sung or not, cannot take the presence of the Holy Ghost from inside of you. You have it 24 hours. You have it every day of your life. You will have it until Jesus comes back. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when we say, Satan, stop your activities in my house. Whether I feel it or not, the devil has got to stop. I said he has to stop. I said he has to stop. Everybody shout and receive that. Let me close. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You see, the Holy Spirit said, I should, I should tell you this. I told you something when I'm prophesying. My prophecy comes out in form of teaching. It's still prophecy. So it's not until I start saying, Thus say the Lord. No, no, no. But there's nothing wrong with saying, Thus say the Lord. This is what the Holy Ghost said, as you said to you. You see, these two things that God has given to you from being saved, 
brought you into his presence and filled you with his presence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will never take it, he will never take the two of them from you. No, let your amen slap the devil. Whether you slept and woke up on the right side of the bed or on the wrong side of the bed, he will never be taken from you. Some, somebody asked me, Apostle, how are you sure? No, ask me now, how are you sure? No, ask me very well. I, you know, as if you're angry. How are you sure? I like that. I'm not afraid of people asking me questions. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 5, see assurance. Abaradaga. See Bible. See assurance. Hebrews 13, 5. No, put King James now. Put King James. <laughs> see Bible. Abaradaga so to predi anamata. He said, let your conversation be with that covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, he has said, what did he say? I will never leave you. Now what? Forsake you. He didn't say it because you pray in tongue. He said it before your father married your mother. He said he will never leave you. Someone say, I believe it. No, say it like to me. Say, he will never leave me. Say, I believe it. Say it one more time. I believe it. Look, when you come into the fullness of this understanding, you will be walking in fullness of the spirit. You will be filled all the time. You know, my, my wife and I, we went somewhere a long time ago. As we were returning home, it was around 9 p.m. And then there's another brother with me because I just, I was sharing with them about the presence and the power of God in a believer. So the brother was really listening to me and enjoying what I was sharing. Suddenly from behind me, from where? Behind me, somebody from a naked man, stark naked, mad, that man is completely mad. Has a, you know, you can see, he's been mad for a long time. The man was holding a wood, two by four, and was coming behind me to hit me at the back of my head. So this brother I'm talking to, he was seeing the man because I was backing the man. So he just screamed, sir, 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 this guy is about to hit you. So when I turned and saw the madman, now fear cash me. You know, some, man, some men of God say, ah, I was not afraid. Get out of town. I was afraid. Because I wasn't expecting. As I saw, he raised it to hit me. I shouted, Jesus! I shouted it out of fear. The madman just stood with the wood in his hand. He just stood there looking at me. Ah, I readjusted. God punished the devil. I knew immediately this fullness in me has come forth. There's no need for praise and worship. I said in the name of Jesus, go on your knees. He went on his knees. I said by yourself, give me the wood. He handed it over to me. I said, you foul devil. I put my hands on his head. Come out of him. The power of God hit him. He fell on the floor and stretched, screamed. He stood up. He said, what happened? I said, you are free from madness. Wait, it was at Lawansing bus stop. Those of you that know Lagos, I'm saying it live. For everybody hearing me, where's the camera? Everybody hearing me can go and confirm. Lawansing bus stop. There's a major petrol station in Lawansing bus stop. If you've ever been to Lawansing, it's a major bus stop. As soon as the man stretched and stood up, normal. I said, somebody give me scissors. Scissors showed up from nowhere. I shaved his head. I said, oh, give me a shirt. Somebody removed their shirt. They gave him. Trousers, they gave him. I said, you are normal. I said, I, I was, we're now trying to find out who knows this man. How long has he been mad? Nobody knows him, but they said they've been seeing him there for eight years. Normal! The spirit has checked out of him. All the downfall boys with their ego in their hem. They gather myself, my wife, the brother, and the madman. Come and see crowd. 9 p.m. at night. People gather from everywhere. Because they know the man. They know him very well in Lawansi. The man is saying, speaking normal, good English. 
the wicked one attacked him. Ah! I turned and I faced the crowd. I said, if anyone of, if anybody, if you now go home without listening to me, what I'm about to say next, I said, the thing that came out of this man will enter you and go home with you. Nobody left. Come and see crowd in Lawanse. I led all of them, all the downfall boys and their conductors. I led all the Agbero to Christ. One by one, they were asking me to lay hands on them. I lay hands that night. Over 1,000 people. They were dropping the eyeball in front of me. By the time we finish, if you see the level of India on the, on the ground, on the road, Lawrence in Boston. I kept laying hands on them one by one. By the time I finished, it was quarter to one a.m. in the morning. Quarter to one. I was so exhausted. And I told my wife, let's go home. Because we're finished. Do you know what those area boys did? They are chairman and all of them. They gather all the downfall. If you have been to Lawrence, they got all the downfall buses and escorted me to my house. When you see action, you must obey. But I did not need a praise and worship leader. I am filled. The knowledge I have of what I have cannot make me think that God will not answer me because I didn't speak in tongues. You didn't hear what I said. I'm not making sense here. That's why the Bible says you are supposed to walk by faith. Not by sight. Walk by faith. Even if you don't feel it, lay hands on your wife. Lay hands on your husband. Lay hands on your children. Decree and demand in the name of Jesus as the east is far from the west. I separate you from the devil. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Look, I am not boasting and God is my witness. The Lord Jesus is my witness. I have never taken my children to hospital. My children are in their 30s. I have not. Because regularly I talk to them. I don't have to feel it though. Sometimes I just waking up and they're looking at me. As I'm <laughs> I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I send you go today. No even will know you. You know, sometimes I feel like ah, my man of God, you never do early morning devotion, you are talking. The early morning devotion did not put the whole of God inside me. Now don't verse. Because you think it's early morning devotion that put the presence of God in you. Early morning devotion is good, but that's not what put the presence of God in you. The knowledge that you have, and you have decided to yield to, of Christ, to walk in, is what brings forth the manifestation of the workings of God for you. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Christianity is simple. Though. It's men that made it difficult. Finally, let me close. Did somebody get something here? Tonight, I'm going to put a roof on this thing. You know what I want to do? I need it to be here early and invite people. Amen? Because you are going to hear things tonight that will discourage the devil against you. The devil just say, you don't take off. You see some Christians, when they enter inside play, Inside plane, that's when they are speaking in tongues. Oh, bro, 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 bro. I say, okay, why are you the praying tongues? Say so that this plane will take us to where we are going safely. Ah, hey, wahala. Do you know that you don't learn how to fight in the midst of war? It's not, it's not in battle. You start learning. I mean, how did they, how did they, how did they carry God? No, you you learn it before you enter. So as you enter, you know He whom you have believed, and you are persuaded. That whatever you have committed to him, he's able to keep. Look, as I came to Port Harcourt, the devil likes it, life likes it or not, I will get back to Lagos. Me, pray that I will get back to Lagos. No, 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 what are you talking about? I must get back to Lagos. That's what the Bible said. <laughs> Somebody told me what that is. He said, your confidence is too much. I said, but don't forget, it is in Christ Jesus. It's not in myself. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 6. Let's close. Someone say thank you, Jesus. So, because you are born again, what are the two things that happened to you? Number one, he brought you into his own presence. Number two, he filled you with his presence. And we are guaranteed that we cannot lose it. 
two of them. True or false? No, no, I want to hear that. True or false? Remember, I will never, what? Leave you, no? Forsake you. That's what he said. I didn't say it. That's what he said. It's, you know, what did I say you should look at now? Huh? Second Timothy 1, 6. Uh, I mean, 1, 12, 12, sorry, not 1, 6. Yes. Second Timothy 1, 1, 1, 12. Quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, and for this cause, I suffer this, I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. You know why? Look at why I'm not ashamed. Why am I not ashamed? No, somebody help me now. Why am I not ashamed? No, help me, help me, help me. Why am I not ashamed? He said, I know whom I have believed. And based on what I know about him, he said, I'm persuaded. The word persuaded means I'm convinced. Beyond shadow of doubt, I'm convinced. I know who I have believed. And based on what I know concerning him, I'm convinced, I'm persuaded, I'm persuaded that everything whatsoever, anything I've committed into his hands, he will keep them. Somebody say he will keep them. No, no, somebody say he will keep them. Yeah, somebody help me say he will keep them. Somebody please help me say he will keep them. So right now, I want you to do something for me, everybody. Commit something into his hand. Hey. Before I left Lagos to come to Podakot, sir, I told him, I said, Lord, I'm going to Podakot. Take me to Podakot and bring me back safely. In Jesus' name. I know he whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. <laughs> that what I've committed into his hands is able. Ability is not in question when it comes to him. He's able to keep it. This is how to be filled constantly. That I will come to the to put call and the devil will harass me and I will not be able to go back to Lagos it's not possible I am persuaded I'm persuaded someone say I'm persuaded no say like me say I'm persuaded I know he whom I have believed I'm persuaded I'm convinced I won't die before my time thank you precious father everybody stand to your feet hey Jesus Adabasa yes sir Yes, sir. You are? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please give me my people. Yes. John 4. Spirit is in me, which God has deposited in me. Nobody can take it away. Yes. What or if I commit sin? Okay. You know, eh? Thank you, sir. I think you should sit down. I think I should answer that, right? Please, everybody sit down in a minute. Let's answer that. He said, the first, he asked two questions. The first question he asked is that Jesus in John 4 looked up to heaven. That's what the Bible said. I looked up to heaven and spoke to God. So let me answer that first. Now, you should know, first of all, yeah, Jesus lived under the Old Testament law. The Holy Spirit has not come to live on earth yet. Am I making sense? Who was on earth as at that time? Jesus, not Holy Spirit. That's why in Daniel, the Bible said when Daniel prayed to heaven, as the angel was coming to give him answer, the prince of Persia, the prince of Iraq, the word Persia means around Iraq. You know Iraq now? <laughs> that, there, are, there are some demons around Iraq that fought his prayer from coming down. Are you seeing that? But when Jesus came, eh, when, Je when Jesus came, died for us, and ascended into heaven, the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 4, what is it? That he that descended is the same that first of all ascended. Why did he ascend? That he may fill all things. Now all this space that all those demons were operating, 
Jesus passed through all of them as he was going into heaven. So right now, he has become their head. They can't block anything again. So when I pray, instead of them to block my heaven, for that not to be able to happen to me, God, through Jesus Christ, send the Holy Ghost. So how did the Holy Ghost come? He crashed into the earth. Oh, you didn't get it. The network of the devils in the atmospheric heavens, he crashed through it. Because that's the greatness of God's power. That's who the Holy Ghost is. He crashed through it and entered into the earth. So he didn't go back to heaven. He's here now. So anytime you are praying and talking to God, God does not answer you from heaven. He answers you from the Holy Ghost inside you. I'll give you one more scripture for that. So that nobody will be left in doubt. In Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, Philip, whether you call it Philemon, Philemon, or whichever pronunciation that is good for you. Philemon, Philemon, you know, chapter 1 verse 6. I'm doing this now because of the question that he asked. He said that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing, which is where? Every good thing is where? No, no, where, where are the every good thing? In you, in Christ Jesus. So anytime you pray and God is going to answer you, he doesn't answer you from looking up to heaven somewhere. He answers you from the Holy Ghost within you. All right, I think I've answered that one. All right, the second question uh, was... Yeah, when he, yes, you see, that God said that the spirit, he would never take his spirit from you. So does that mean when you commit sin, he does not take the Holy Spirit from you? You know, you, you, see, you are still with the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is inside you, and it takes, and you sin. You see, what people call sin is usually fornication or adultery. That's all we term as sin. That's why the church is full of hypocrites. People are collecting bribes and stealing Nigerian money. It's not a sin. Because when they steal Nigerian money as a minister, as a, as a senator, as a judge, they, they pay tight. So as far as they are concerned, once they have paid tight, God has closed his eyes. They have not sinned. Look, the worst sin in the New Testament is unbelief. It is you and I who classify sin. So we now make sexual sin higher than stealing Nigerian money. That's why we are praying that Nigeria should be better. It's not getting any better. Because they are stealing, looting. And the people stealing Nigerian money, most of them are pastors. Who are ministers. Pastors who are directors. In an NPC. Pastors. Christians. That he will not go to work except he does early morning prayer. He cannot sign contract paper without collecting a good check. See, and everybody don't quiet. All of you were waiting for fornication before. Is it we just lie to ourselves? We lie, we deceive ourselves. That the only sin, you know, we now make it as if the only sin that there is is sexual sin. So if you do not commit sexual sin, you have not sinned at all. Look at deception. So you see, there is no classification of sin in the Bible. That's why it calls it the works of the flesh. Greed, as a matter of fact, the Bible said that's the one that takes the soul of a man. Greed, covetousness. It takes a man. It, it makes a man. It comes to the person that is greedy and takes his life. Greed. All right. I haven't said that. I said that to help you to know this, this, uh, um, this wrong idea we have that unless a brother or a sister commits sexual immorality, they have not sinned. They have not seen at all. You know, they don't see. They are not sinner. So the Holy Ghost is with them. The one that collects bribe, the Holy Ghost is still inside him. But the one that commits sexual fornication, the Holy Ghost has left him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Sin is sin. And the wages for it is death. Not God, I'm sorry. See, I'm sorry. You didn't hear me. The, the wages for sin is what? Death. It's not, oh God, I'm sorry, I've sinned. Oh God, forgive me, I've sinned. No, that's not the wages. The price to pay 
for sin is what? It's death. It's not, you won't find anywhere in the Bible say, because you sin, tell God I'm sorry. There's nothing like that. You sin, you must die. For the soul that, the soul that sinners must die. So somebody now came to die for our sin. Don't you get it? Who died for our sin? Jesus. He now came to die for our sin. So that, that our sin will not make God take from us whatever he has given to us. So watch. The Bible now said in Romans chapter 4 verse 25. See Bible. Romans chapter 4. You know there's a woman that I know in church. Eh? Anytime she comes to church. She's always having. She calls it the spirit of discernment. I discern. I just perceive in my spirit. That this sister is sleeping with men. Meanwhile. The woman can nag her husband. The other one left home. Because of nagging. She can Eh, what you call it? Eh, so, eh, 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 so, you want to, eh, 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 eh. The husband left home. As far as she's concerned, she has not committed sin. She's not dealing with her husband. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Bible said, one of the worst sins you can commit to grieve the spirit of God is for your mouth to say things about the next Christian that is wrong. He said, grieve not the spirit of God. You can grieve him not to work for you by what you say about somebody else. You didn't sleep with somebody, you, but you just said, don't, don't mind, don't mind that. Don't mind, don't mind. Sir, what's your name, sir? Eh? Owen. Don't mind, brother Owen. See, when they say people should come and give for 5,000, now he first run out. He won't show, he won't show, he won't show saying he ain't get money among God. The Bible said immediately the Holy Ghost will be grieved with you. You know why? Because he is a member of the body of Christ. You see, but we don't teach that in the church. All the everything is always sexual. I don't know why. He, that's why there's so much hypocrisy in the church. So much hypocrisy. Which scripture did I say? Issue? Huh? I forgot to watch which scripture. Okay. Anyway. Eh? Shuban chapter 4. So I can't remember which scripture. But anyway, you will forgive me, you know. <laughs> forgive me for saying it. You know, but what I just want you to know is this. Holy Spirit, help me in Jesus' name. Let me tell you. Without the Holy Spirit, once you fall into sin, you can't come to repentance. If you make mistake, if you sin, without the Holy Spirit, you can't come to repentance. So if the Holy Spirit leaves you, can you ever repent? That's to tell you he has not left you. So when you sin and you feel bad, it's a sign that the Holy Spirit is still with you. He's still walking. That's why he will never leave. Never. He will never leave you. He can't leave you. You see, let me tell you. I've been so careful since the way I'm answering this question. Because I don't want to say something that you are not ready for. So that I, I do not um, grieve your heart or your mind because of lack of knowledge. You, you see, let me tell you. When you as a born again Christian, you take beer and you are drinking. You are drinking it with the Holy Ghost inside you. So guess what the Holy Ghost is doing? He's telling you inside. Why are you drinking beer? You are better than this. Because you are drinking beer, does not mean you will run out. No. He's the one that will still be telling you, bearing witness with you inside. When you as a brother carry a girl that you are not married to, as you are having sex with her, the Holy Ghost is inside you. You are having sex with the Holy Ghost there, with her. With her. And as you are having the thing, he's telling you, you are not supposed to be doing this. You are the righteousness of God. That's why when you finish having that sex, you now start feeling bad. See, eh? The Holy Ghost does not leave us like he leaves them in the Old Testament. You know why? Somebody had paid the price for the Holy Ghost to stay with us. I remember the scripture now. Thank you. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. God punish the devil. See Holy Ghost. Oh. <laughs> Adagada! I don't preach really since so people don't say I'm taking time. I'm just answering questions. Everybody look at this. Jesus was delivered for what? 
Talk to me now. What was he delivered for? So God handed Jesus over to any mistake you will ever make in life. Oh, oh. is that not comforting? Any mistake you will ever make, Jesus handed, Je God took Jesus and handed him over to be punished for your mistakes. You know, I was, put it up. I was sharing this with some pastors. And one pastor said to me, he said, no, I don't agree. I don't agree. I said, why don't you agree? Look at it. He said, you, I said, you don't agree. Okay, tell me what you don't agree. He, was just, he said, I don't know, Shabu, I just don't agree. I said, that means you're an antichrist. Because you hate the word of God. I'm showing you Bible. You can't show me anything. But watch this. You see, when Romans chapter 4, verse 25 was written, my father was not yet born. Okay, let me not use my own father. What of your father? Was your father born when this thing was written? This thing was written over 2,000 years ago. But God knew you were coming. Oh, talk to me now. He knew you were coming in the future. But he had written this thing over 2,000 years. That Jesus was handed over for your offenses. I, have, I was not born yet. Which offense was he handed over for? You see, I have children, by the grace of God, my wife and I. My children are going to have their own children. Which they, those children will be my grandchildren. Those, my grandchildren that are not yet born. Romans chapter 4, verse 25 is for them. Am I making sense? It's for them. But those children, have, they've not done anything wrong yet. They are not even alive. They have not been born. But God is saying, let's say, the name of my grandson is going to be called Victor, like myself. Yes? So, Victor Todd. Jesus has been handed over for your transgressions, for your offenses. There's no Victor Todd born yet. I mean, third generation. But he's coming. So, when he is born, comes to know Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, we will now expose him to Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Are you seeing it? So, this scripture covers my past, my present, and guess what? My future, which my grandchildren are going to enjoy. Hallelujah. <laughs> sir, I hope I've been able to answer it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Praise God. You know, next time, I will give opportunity for everybody to, to ask me questions so that uh, we can answer it. Because sometimes, question. Don't look down on anybody that asks questions. Because question does not help only the person that asks it. It, it helps every other person. Amen. So personally, I like it when people ask me questions. The one that I cannot answer, we say it. The one I can answer by the scripture, I will say it. And I thank God for this one. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet in Jesus' name. Our Father, we want to thank you. Everybody, let's give him thanks in Jesus' name. Thank him for his love and his grace. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for what he has done for us. Thank him for the word that we have heard. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We, are, we celebrate your son for us, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Father, receive all the glory. Thank you that the word has not fallen onto ground, ordinary ground, but the good ground of our hearts. Thank you, Father, as we begin to walk in the fullness that you have for us in Christ Jesus. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I love you and God bless you. I'll see everybody this evening in Jesus' name.